You know, there are times that I'm, I'm driving along and I think, did I really just see that? But hey, you know, it's on film now, so you saw that too. Uh, hey, it's Paul. We have version 10.10.2 of the full self-driving. All right, I guess they're gonna stay there. That's fine. Um, we are driving to Mount Dora right now because the last time we received an update, which for me was 10.9, um, the, well, let's just say we had a few challenges. Now those challenges were more uh, dealing with parking lots and dealing with some really weird roads, but I wanna try that again, see what's improved. Um, and, and we'll go from there and, and hopefully things will be a little bit better, but eh, we'll see. So we do have a circle here that we're coming up to. And looks like we're gonna enter that carefully. That's good. A little jerky, a little jerky. I don't mind the jerky as much. I just wish it was just a little smoother, but I think that's one of the things we're just going to have to see improve over time. Now we're gonna to need to get over here. Let's see if Zoe gets over. There we go. Good. Now this is a very confusing area for those who have seen me drive through this area of Tavares before. It's really confusing to the vehicles. It's confusing to most people. Uh, and that's why I like doing it. I wanna give the car a challenge. Of course, there's. it's easy to have a, a drive where there's no real interventions, but that's not what I'm interested in. I want to stress the system, put it into uh, potential failure to see what's going to happen and what's not going to happen from there. Well, that was a little weird. We're going to go and report that just because that felt really off. Almost as if the car didn't want to go there. All right. Cruising along, it's 35, 25 mile an hour speed limit. That was, could have swore it's at 35 mile an hour a second ago. I'll have to check that. I think this is a 25 through here. Yeah, it is a 25, at least at this point. Uh, so I don't know where that 35 came from, but that also will be in the, the report. So I'm not too worried about that. Let's see. So far, so good. Now we have a straightaway for a bit, so I will pick back up once we get into Mount Dora. But so far, actually, um, I, I haven't noticed a whole lot of improvements, but uh, the vehicle's performing very well. Obviously, we're not just looking for improvements, we're looking for regressions. Uh, if you remember on one of the recent updates, I can't remember which one, where it, it started again, but the phantom braking uh, started making me seasick. Hey, this is that road, so there's another reason we're doing this too just to see how that goes. So we're gonna go ahead and bump up to the 45. There it goes. It sees it too. And of course we have a red light, but I will see you in a moment uh, once we get to Mount Dora. Okay, I do wanna note, I am getting those slowdowns at every single shadow for the most part. Uh, it's not as pronounced as it was before, but it's enough that with someone behind me, I'm gonna have to come out of FSD. All right, I have no one behind me now, so we're gonna go ahead and get back into full self-driving. Uh, I am curious. There's been a lot of media attention around the Phantom braking, and unfortunately, what the media is making it sound like is that the vehicle's slamming on its brakes and coming to almost complete stops. And, and realistically, what we're talking about is a drop of, you know, one to two miles per hour, some cases three to four miles, maybe five miles an hour. It's not massive. Occasionally, yes, there's been some significant drops on rare occasions. Even I've experienced that. But by and large, what we're talking about is more of, and I'll actually demonstrate it for you since it's not doing it, thankfully, is just that kind of, this kind of up and down. Now, if you're a passenger in this vehicle, oh boy, that's rough. 
uh, because you're not expecting it, you're not feeling it, you also aren't holding on to something necessarily. So uh, it, it's very rough. There's one right there. Now that was a little more pronounced. We actually slowed down about six miles an hour. Two on that one. That was more of a significant. And then now, so this phantom braking is a challenge because it also means that when you're driving, it's not comfortable as the driver either. So it's not something I'm inclined to allow to continue. If I'm on a road like this where that's going to happen and I see that it starts to happen, I will disengage full self-driving. It's one of those scenarios where it's not really dangerous, but it is uncomfortable and I'm not interested in experiencing an upset stomach. Uh, I did have a bout of food poisoning over this past weekend, so I really am not interested in an upset stomach right now, to be honest. All right, well, we are almost to Mount Dora. I am gonna get rid of the seasick, uh, you know, drop of a couple mile per hour here and there, but uh, I did want you to see what they're talking about. And it is an issue. It's something that needs to be addressed and needs to be dealt with. Uh, but it's also not, not as much a, a huge safety issue as it just is an annoyance issue. The, the people behind you probably really aren't noticing a whole lot. It's, it's You probably look like you're a little bit intoxicated perhaps uh, because you're speeding up and slowing down, speeding up and slowing down. But beyond that, not really a safety issue, but definitely something that's gonna make you feel uncomfortable. All right, let's get into this road. go from there. All right, so I will see you all in Mount Dora in a moment. All right, for those of you who remember, this is where the Tesla had a few challenges. So we are going to head down this way. I'm actually going to enter in an address, Pisces Rising. At this point, it wants to... I think we're having the same issues, aren't we? All right, let's give it one more try. This is an interesting one because for those of you who can see, this is diagonal parking on both sides. Um, now we're supposed to go all the way down, do a little loop, turn, and come back up. But for some reason, and yes, those are it is folding the mirrors in thinking it's narrow, because it keeps thinking, I need to follow one of these cars. What are we gonna do? All right, I'm gonna hit the gas slightly. The accelerator slightly. I know everyone laughs at me for that, that's okay. <laughs> they laugh at me for that. All right, oh, almost got it, stopped. Blinker's now on. All right, we seem to have Maybe understood this, maybe not. Oh wow, there's cars on both sides now. Let's see what happens. Mirrors in, mirrors are out, blinker on, blinker off. All right, this is good. This is good. This part's good. This part's good. Oh boy, scared to death. This is funny. This is funny. All right, we're gonna disengage. Let's re-engage now that we're on the straight. Come on, re-engage. Huh, all right. Again, trying to follow cars on the left. Wow, this is fascinating. Utterly fascinating. Let's, let's make sure we send this. I know I've disengaged and every time we disengage, it technically sends it. But, oh wow, that's, that's really annoying. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put a new address in, get us out of here. I just wanted to try that out. All right, let them go. Nice and slow through here. We're gonna go ahead and engage, full self-driving. It is a beautiful sunny day, 82 degrees, I think it is, 83 degrees right now. Um, 
So there's a lot of people out. So again, being extra careful. Uh, for those of you who follow, uh, I don't have a huge Twitter following, obviously. I don't have a huge following period yet, but um, I did have an interesting discussion with someone uh, on Twitter. They're, they're against full self-driving as far as the way the beta is being rolled out. I, I get the impression they don't mind self-driving. What they mind is um, that the testing for self full self-driving beta is being done in a... Um, well, by and not a closed circuit. I, I'm trying not to, to put words in their mouth, so uh, forgive me uh, for, for taking some assumptions, but from the discussion that we had, it sounded like that was the main issue, is that the average person shouldn't be doing this. They're not trained, and all of the people around us haven't signed up to be uh, crash test dummies, basically, uh, the, if, if I remember the discussion correctly. And they're not wrong in many aspects. Uh, actually, I, I don't want to say they're, they're right or wrong, because uh, let's talk about that for a moment. Um, there are certain inherent challenges with um, anyone testing a beta in the public. All right, we have a red light. Um, one of those challenges is that, yes, these people in front of me, they don't have any idea that right now the car is in charge. Now, yes, I have my hands on the wheel. I have my foot actually touching the brake pedal right now, uh, even though it's not depressed. It, yeah, I'm taking precautions, but in the end, the car could take an action on its own right now. And they haven't signed up for that. Neither have any of the people in the vehicles around. Uh, it is an interesting discussion. And when I have that discussion with people, I typically reference when I was teaching my children to drive. And the reason I say that is because right now I have, again, my hands on the wheel. I'm fully paying attention. Uh, I have my feet you know, over the appropriate pedal and the ability, of course, to, to move, um, to, to either depress the accelerator or the brake. And I also have the ability to disengage that full self-drive and take over completely and in charge completely at any given time. Like right here, we have a green light. There's people crossing. There's no way I'm letting my car do anything that could harm someone. Um, all right, we're creeping forward, creeping forward. That's good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go. Good job there. All right, so to the point though, when I'm talking about when I was teaching my children to drive, I was sitting in the passenger seat, just as every other parent is. And just like in this vehicle, there is no separate set of controls. So with a 15-year-old, that was how old they had to be in the state we lived in to earn a learner's permit. I had a 15-year-old in the driver's seat, of course, starting off in parking lots, but eventually on roads, much like these. And I had absolutely no control if they did something. If there was, for some reason, they were to um, decide to hit the gas in, in any of those scenarios or not to brake appropriately or turn inappropriately at a time and cut someone off or run into someone, I had no control. Uh, here, I look at this very much like that. The only difference is I have all of those controls. So I think that's why I look at this and I don't see it as being dangerous in the same way uh, that I see some people talk about online. Uh, right or wrong, I, I'm not going to say if someone's right or wrong. I, I, that's not for me to determine. I could be completely wrong on this, uh, as most people could determine. I have no idea. Uh, I think that I'm, I'm right on this, but otherwise, of course, I wouldn't be doing it. And I also have to understand there's some bias involved because each one of us who is in charge of the thing we are in charge of believes that we are the right person to be doing that. So maybe there's some confirmation bias there. Uh, additionally, I'm a former instructor for tactical vehicle operation courses. I've taken emergency vehicle operation courses as a firefighter for a long time, uh, for several decades in driving emergency apparatus. Uh, and I've driven emergency vehicles all over the world for different assignments, uh, for different jobs. So. Maybe that's also where I get a little more 
comfort in my abilities to act or interact and understand that maybe something isn't going to happen that would be expected. But that aside, uh, I would want to point out though that we haven't had any accidents yet and there are, uh, from what I heard, 60,000 or more people who have the beta. Uh, that's, that fascinates me. I'm very happy to hear that that's the, the case, that we haven't had any accidents. I of course hope that continues uh, and I hope everyone continues to be safe. Uh, with that, I'm going to pick up a little bit further, but I just wanted to give you some general thoughts on that, for better or for worse, take it, leave it for whatever you want. See you in a minute. You know, the, again, there are times that I, I just think, did you see that too? Okay, we're entering Tavares again. Uh, we'll be taking a different path out than we took in. Uh, this is the one where it gives us a couple really good sharp turns just to, to see how the car reacts. Uh, again, today, mixed, mixed uh, drive, as always when I do these. Uh, I try and pick some places that I know the vehicle will have a hard time, so we get a lot of disengagements. Really want to stress and see where the, the challenges are. There, it would be fairly simple for me to, uh, I do know a couple routes where I do have zero disengagements. Thankfully, they're actually routes that like I take from the doctor to home and uh, from different uh, friends places and different restaurants. So that works out really well that those are zero, zero disengagements, but, uh, or zero intervention, really. Uh, that's nice. That's a huge improvement uh, from when I first started with the beta, but I will say that uh, that would make for very boring videos. Uh, that's more of the stuff we want to see, right? We want to see it have uh, a difficulty or a hard time understanding something that isn't necessarily in the norm for where people drive. This person's driving the wrong way. There we go. Let's not go the wrong way on a one-way road. Well, at least they caught themselves. That would have been interesting as it narrowed. But this, again, you're watching someone who's fully in charge of their car, they don't have beta, and yet they're having a hard time figuring out what to do here, where to go. Um, that's why I like bringing the beta through this area. If it's challenging to an experienced driver, to the average driver, then I want to see how the beta software handles it. So I hope you appreciate it. Uh, that's about it. We're actually mostly out of Tavares now. Uh, I can see the high schools let out. So uh, we will have potentially some people crossing. But we're going to let him go because I have a feeling it was going to go anyway. And that's okay. All right. So with that, <laughs> Thanks, Zoe. Right as I'm trying to do an outro. Um, yeah, let's let's just see what's in the other lane. But to prove the point, again, nice confusing areas. Uh, if there's anything you want to see, of course, always leave it down below. I did have someone say that the view isn't the greatest. Uh, unfortunately, today I have so, some schmutz, I guess is what they call it, on the, the windshield. There's these uh, swarms of, of mosquitoes and other bugs out right now as the weather has started to really get warm again. And that causes, well, it causes a whole lot of mess on a windshield. And I hit one right as I was leaving uh, my house. And apparently it left a lot of stuff on the windshield. So now I gotta go take the car to get washed. But with that, I hope that you've enjoyed this. Let me know if there's anything you wanna see. Like, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you again. And as always, please drive safely and take care. Bye all.